Paolo Falhianto and welcome. We're showcasing success stories and lessons learned on renewable energy in Niue and how some of the latest projects are turning heads. In 2007, the Pacific Islands Greenhouse Gas Abatement through Renewable Energy Project, or PIGAREP, through SPREP in Samoa, was established to try and reduce the growth of greenhouse gas emissions in Pacific Island countries. This includes the removal of barriers preventing the more widespread use of renewable energy. The PIGAREP project is a follow-on from the Pacific Islands Renewable Energy Project, PREP, which ended in 2006. PIGAREP is targeting a 30% reduction in CO2 gas emissions by 2015. We are being impacted by decisions that are made at the global level, so we need to take uh, uh, as much as possible uh, into our own hands, our own destiny. The issue here is to try and lessen the amount of uh, fossil fuel that has been uh, used. There's an abundance of, of resources. There's hydro, uh, wind, solar. It's not the source, it's the uh the, the equipment that, uh, that convert these sources for our use. It's only the initial cost that's really capital uh, intensive. Our location makes it hard for us to, to access technology, to access um, experts who can help out. And I think that part of that destiny is our ability to be able to look at other sources of uh, renewable energy uh, where we can be self-sufficient uh, as much as possible. Niue has a small population of 1,500 people and only 400 occupied households. However, power consumption on a yearly basis averages 3 megawatt hours. 780,000 litres of diesel worth almost $1.5 million annually. Its small population makes it even more vulnerable, having less people to share the costs. The cost to the Niue government and the Niue people has been horrendous. Just recently, the price for a litre of uh, petrol had gone up from $2.68 to $3.20. The new government has had to, uh, to look at ways at reducing this cost because this is a huge, huge cost for our people here. This, along with the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, is one of the key factors driving NIWA's implementation of renewable energy. In 2004, Niue was severely affected by a Category 5 super cyclone, causing widespread damage, destruction and two deaths. Its forecast these types of cyclones will increase in frequency and severity due to changes in climatic conditions. Niue has recently implemented several renewable energy technologies funded by the European Union including three grid-connected solar PV systems and solar water heaters and LPG gas stoves for people's homes. These are the main areas Niwe has ventured into as a means to mitigate the emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and at the same time save costs. The three grid-connected solar PV systems can generate a maximum of 52.5 kilowatts of power, which is about $120,000 worth of savings every year. Combined with the solar water heaters and the LPG gas stoves, they provide an estimated 10% savings overall. There are three solar PV panel sites on Niue. This site by the Niue Hospital is the biggest. It's based on the ground and generates 30 kilowatts of power. This site was uh, chosen because of uh, not much obstruction of trees. And also the government on the land. And it's easy to work on. The grid is not far off from the installation itself. So all those points, you choose this one as an as a area to begin the project. Well, in the sun's energy, or the sun's rays, as they come to ground, we've got two components. One is the heat, which is what you feel on your arms uh, and your body, and heats us up generally, and the other one is the electrical component. Now, the electrical component is the one we're interested in here for the solar panels, 
And in each of these panels, there's 72 little cells that collect this, the electrical energy from the sunlight and put it into the cables for us to hook into the grid. Now, the, the energy that we get is called direct current, and that's not suitable for directly fitting into our national grid here. So in the little room at the back of the power station there, we have some inverters which translate the DC energy into AC energy, which matches our grid, and then we can plug it into the network and do the business. The production of uh, power from this one, we are supposed to get uh, maximum energy from about 10 to 1 p.m. in the afternoon on a good sunny day. And before that and after, yeah, the sun is dying down and so is the power. When the inverters uh, are on the grid, they are monitoring the grid to see what the energy is on the other side, and they're also monitoring the solar panels. And if there's a surplus of energy, they then let that go into the grid. In return, the diesel generator in the power station will throttle back a little bit to compensate for the extra energy that's coming from our solar panels. So that throttling back uh, allows the uh, diesel to use less, less diesel fuel and the savings in fossil fuel and those sorts of things start to accrue from there. A second site at the Newey High School has a 20 kilowatt capacity and is based on the roofs of classrooms. There is a, a, a school of thought that says put them on the roofs of buildings. Uh, if the buildings are constructed with adequate uh, reinforcing and uh, hurricane rating, then that's a good idea. But you can't just look at any old building and decide, yeah, we'll bung it on there and it'll work. We prefer the ground because it, uh, you can work on the ground and you don't need to climb on the top to physically fix it. And we do, you don't have leaks into and also the lining of the cables on top of the roof. I prefer a ground mount because it's the trench you're going to dig and also the structure you're going to build it up from. The other issue is that the buildings don't always face north and you will see the panels there must face north and they must be at that angle to get the maximum yield from the solar panel, panel itself. But it's good that we tested the ground mount and also the, the roof mount uh, to see how long cost and all the difficulties of uh, installing on the ground and all sorts. It's a good idea and for a homeowner that's got a roof that looks quite good and they can put one of these things up, sure, but for an industrial grade installation it's, it's better to build your own purpose built design on a piece of ground like this here and, and do it properly from the ground up. In 2009 the EU funded the purchase and installation of several hundred solar water heaters and LPG gas stoves that were then sold to households at a much subsidised cost. Although prices have come down over recent years, renewable energy technology is still very costly, especially for Pacific Island people. The EU funded purchase, import and subsidised sale of these items in Niue put these technologies within reach of the average household. Without donor assistance, this would not have been possible. One problem with donor funding are the restrictions on the use of funds, often requiring components to be sourced from donor-related countries. This has caused problems with the solar PV panels and the LPG gas stoves. The components under the European Union must be from European-related countries, so these solar panels came from Germany. Uh, the converters came from uh, European countries as well. So. Those two components were set, and they were a set piece delivered here with the plans uh, to build the construction of the, 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 the structure itself. Now, there was where the trouble started a little bit in that the plans were really not quite up to scratch for, again, hurricane-type conditions. And we weren't overly confident that what they supplied on paper could be built here properly. So we had to backtrack and uh, redesign some of it ourselves and take advice from one or two experts overseas on construction of hurricane rated structures in these parts of the world. It took a long time. Uh, back, we go backwards and forwards with emails trying to get the right uh, equipment and uh, I think uh, we had a few problems with the stoves. When they got here it wasn't the right ones and um, we ended up having to ship more in with the right specification. Once the equipment is installed, however, there remains the issue of maintenance over the long term. New is a tropical country, so we've got a high salt content in the air and high humidity and high temperatures, and that tends to rot and corrode the components in the system. But provided they're maintained just like you would maintain your car, you keep it clean, you keep it washed and oiled, then there's no reason why these shouldn't be going in 50 years' time.
So it's a question of being uh, regular and routine with your maintenance and taking care of them, and then they'll work just as most other things do. For LPG gas stoves, a secure transporter, supplier and retail outlet had to be established as part of implementation to ensure the project's long-term success. Specific contractors were also trained to maintain the ovens over time. The solar water heaters were installed and maintained by existing local plumbers. For solar PV panels for individual households, however, such measures have yet to be established. Member of Parliament and former Cabinet Minister Terry Cow has sourced his own wind turbine and solar PV panels online. He is currently relocating away from the coast due to Cyclone Hatta and is testing these systems at his new location. These two, the solar and the wind generator, uh, go, go charge the batteries and we've got, at the moment we've got two big batteries and they're just ordinary uh, heavy duty uh, Caterpillar batteries. So they're, at the moment they're doing well. We may need to have two more, uh, but they're cheaper than getting the uh, actual uh, solar, solar batteries. And then the power from that solar battery, uh, from the uh, batteries goes through at the moment a UPS computer one. And we've sourced in Australia for a better inverter and a much cheaper price. So, and it's got a, a bigger capacity, 5,000 watts. Uh, output. So uh, that, that will be better and uh, at the moment we're running the whole house during the daytime on the uh, batteries and uh, that's the fridge freezer and the deep freeze, big deep freeze, the computer and the uh, TV and the radios, uh, no problem with that, and the washing machine. Uh, this inverter will not run the electric jug but um, that's not a hassle because we can just run it off the power. Terry hopes by sourcing suppliers and testing the systems himself, he is providing affordable solutions for other households. Another family utilizing renewable energy is Morris Tafatu. His house is located out in the bush, away from the national power grid. Well, the materials has, been, has come for so many years, but it was only at the beginning of this year that we were able to, uh, to, to, uh, to get someone from, it's, it was by chance really. We got this person from, a relative from, from the Cook Islands to come in and help install the, uh, the system for us. When we had the old system, the generator, we can only spend like uh, three to four hours at, uh, at any one time. So we were restricted in that uh, regard, so that it was mainly in the evenings that we need, when we need the lights, that we uh, turn it on. So with this new system in place, it's like, uh, well, not quite utopia, because like, uh, but it, you know, it's very, very useful and a great help to us. I think it's the way to go for, for, for new age. Even, you know, even out in the villages. I believe that people can also install something like this in, in, in their own homes if they can afford to do it. Because in the long term, I believe it's going to be very helpful. By having solar panels, wind turbine generators and other sources of renewable energy available, it makes it possible for families to relocate without being tied to the existing power grid. The Tsalangi family of Makefu are also moving far inland away from the coast. During a cyclone, the waves come right up to our house, where it's uh, located uh, near the coast in Makifu village. And that was an experience that we don't want to, to have again. Electricity from the, the main grid is yet to, to come up, up this area. Solar energy for electricity will help us have power continuously. Introducing solar and other renewable energy sources is an attempt to cut back on the high cost of using diesel to generate power. Niue is meeting 15% of that energy need with renewable energy technologies. There are further plans to increase that usage to 25% by implementing another 74 kilowatt solar PV grid in 2012. There is, however, a very serious drawback. 
Because the current diesel generators are high performance engines, they need to constantly operate at an optimum level in order to maintain their best fuel efficiency. If less power is required, then these engines will fall below the optimum level and may actually end up using more fuel, costing more and negating the use of renewable energies as a savings device. Implementing more renewable energies sounds like a good idea, but it may still cost the same to government, the consumer and the environment. Not only that, the renewable energy projects are not addressing the issue of motor vehicles, and so consumption of fossil fuels and greenhouse gas emissions may still remain high in those areas. Government, however, is looking at means to address this issue. It is important, extremely important, that we look at not just um, fuel for power generation, but also we are investigating the possibilities of using uh, electric vehicles to enable our people to um, use the power generated by the solar panels to generate or to run these particular vehicles for us at the present time. The increasingly widespread use of renewable energies will not necessarily have an immediate impact on either the environment or create savings from reduced reliance on fossil fuels in the short term. Indications are that fossil fuels will still be needed regardless of how many technologies are implemented. For NUET, renewable energy is indeed an attractive and cleaner energy source. But until the issue of replacing the existing generators with smaller ones and vehicles are made to run cheaper on alternative energy, then it will be some time before NUET and the region can achieve 50 to 100% reliance on alternative energy.